Uh, welcome to this lecture number 37 of groundwater hydrology course. And in this particular lecture class, I uh, will cover this modeling and management of groundwater. Under this uh, topics to be covered are contaminant source identification and monitoring network design. So, uh, first topic is this contaminant source identification. Why this contaminant source identification? Groundwater contamination is a problem of worldwide concern and this uh, in this often man-made causes are responsible. Either we can have some kind of geogenic source or we can have anthropogenic uh, thing like arsenic problem is geogenic thing, but contamination there can be dumping of some pollutant uh, in uh, online ponds that is uh, some kind of man made cause. So, source identification is management necessity, why it is necessary? Uh, it is necessary from groundwater management point of view. If we can manage uh, or manage to identify the source, uh, we can have some kind of remediation strategy, remediation strategy for uh, that uh, particular aquifer and we can decontaminate uh, or we can start the uh, remediation process in that particular aquifer. Next is uh, effective remediation requires reliable source identification. So, this is the point that remediation thing we need some kind of proper estimate about the source both in space and time, both in space and time and its strength also a key parameter for identification. So, useful in fixing liabilities for pollution. Let us say uh, for man made causes we cannot do with the uh, do anything with the geogenic causes, but uh, for man made it causes man-made causes, it is important that uh, we should fix the liabilities. So, that if 1, 2 or 3 or 4 defaulters are present uh, within that groundwater uh, jurisdiction area, then we can uh, fix the share of their responsibilities for decontamination or some kind of price that they need to pay for uh, the uh, health related spendings of that locality. So, what is this? Uh, hydrogeology as forensic science and forensic 
because we need to identify the things properly. Without identification, it is a difficult thing. And ethics in this field, so we, we should have some kind of ethics and the safety of groundwater that is uh, the most important thing. Without a proper management strategy or identification strategy, we cannot uh, protect our groundwater. So, what is the basic problem? Basic problem is that let us say <coughs> we have a source S1, another source S2 and this rectangular part is one aquifer and uh, this is let us say our uh, 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 wells W1, W2 uh, wells W2, uh, W1, W2, W3 and W4 these are in the down gradient portion of the aquifer. Let us say this is uh, your uh, flow direction. So, uh, with this aquifer configuration and these many uh, observation well or monitoring wells, uh, we can identify the S1 or S2 in terms of its location, whether S1 is responsible, whether S2 is responsible. In terms of uh, its, its strength, whether for the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, maybe uh, S1 is responsible for the contamination uh, only in the second year. But in case of S2, they are responsible for the contamination of first, third and fourth year. That is also important to find out the activity uh, period uh, and so three things are important here, source location, this is source strength and their activity period. So, these three points are most important thing. So, in this case forward modeling will give us if we have this source and this strength, this source and this strength it will give us uh, some kind of breakthrough curve that is time versus concentration curve for W1 location like this and for more forward modeling we can get uh, W2 or uh, breakthrough curve for W2 uh, as this multiple peaks due to different strengths and their activity uh, periods. But the complicated problem is that we may not have a proper observation or management uh, plan in place and we do not have any uh, proper monitoring strategy for that contaminated area. So, it may uh, so happen that uh, the contamination may be noticed after 10 or 20 years after uh, it has started in that particular area. So, uh, the problem is that inverse modeling. Inverse modeling means we have the breakthrough curve, maybe uh, we can find the breakthrough curve in truncated sense. Truncated means let us say that we are starting the uh, monitoring at the end of second year. So, we will get this part of the breakthrough curve only. So, same for this part 
let us say we have started this W2 well uh, observation well after third year. So, we may get this kind of breakthrough curve uh, or truncated breakthrough curve. <coughs> so, it is important that with this complete or truncated or limited information, we need to have some kind of proper estimate of uh, the source uh, in terms of its strength, its location and its activity period. So, source location, magnitude and period of activity are three important aspects. Now, what are these inverse problems? So, first type is backward or retrospective problem. The initial conditions are to be found. Second one is coefficient inverse problem. In this one, uh, classical parameter estimation problem, where a constant multiplier in the governing equation is to be found out. And boundary inverse problem, some missing information at the boundary of a domain is to be found out. So, our problem is basically backward or retrospective problem. Inverse problems are mostly ill posed problems because most of the cases we may not have a unique solution for a unit inverse problem. So, difficulties in source identification sparsely distributed observation wells that is the most important thing because uh, if there is no uh, proper observation or monitoring network uh, is there then it is a problem. And sparsity of observation data observation data is also sparse in nature, inaccurate prediction of contaminant transport processes, modeling errors, measurement errors. So, one kind of error uh, that may be there is related to modeling error, another one is measurement error. So, sparsity of data, error in measurement and error in modeling these three are the most important things for source identification. So, billions of possible discrete combination of magnitude, locations and duration possible. So, there may be multiple uh, combinations that will give you the same set of breakthrough curves that is available for a particular monitoring well. So, it is important that a proper strategy should be followed for monitoring, uh, otherwise there will be difficulties in identification of sources. So, so, we can have uh, situations where uh, let us say this is first kind of combination in our previous problem you are having S 2 and S 3, uh, S 1 and S 2 these two are the sources. So, uh, we have two things that this kind of S 1 combination and the second S 2 combination may give the same results uh, in the down gradient monitoring wells in terms of breakthrough curves. So, other difficulties problems with delineating the physical extent of the area to be modeled. Because we need to have certain kind of 
uh, limitation in terms of uh, delineating the physical extent of the area. Uncertainties in the boundary conditions and initial conditions. So, the problem is that although uh, our in terms of our classification, we are uh, interested in finding out the initial conditions, but boundary conditions are also important because physical extent uh, is important and if you are considering if you are not considering a proper physical extent of the area to be modeled, then boundary condition is a critical thing for modeling. Uncertainties in estimation of flow transport parameters. So, uncertainties are also there in terms of estimation of flow transport parameters like hydraulic conductivity, longitudinal dispersivity, uh, transport dispersivity. These uh, can play all also important role in modeling and identification of sources. And identification of unknown pollution sources belong to the category of inverse problem which are often ill posed, because we do not have a proper uh, system in place uh, for which we can say that this is our proper uh, source that we have identified from our problem, but uh, the problem is that uh, we can have a multiple combination for which uh, there will be same breakthrough curve in the monitoring wells. And unique solution does not necessarily exist and solution may be unstable to small changes in the input data. So, sensitivity of the solution approach that is another important issue. So, various processes involving solute transport in the porous media. So, we can have advection processes where groundwater flow is caused by gravity. Next, we can have diffusion molecular process where uh, constituents are spread due to differences in concentration. Next, we can have dispersion mixing process caused by differences in velocity, in magnitude and direction of water particles. And another one is adsorption processes where certain constituents are attached to the grain material. And final thing is the decay. So, uh, there will be combination of these processes which will dictate uh, the source identification. So, proper transport process identification is the first part of any source identification problem. So, overall methodology is that we can have optimization model, optimization model, we can have objective function and uh, we can have Jacobian matrix and with this we can uh, have some kind of uh, search direction, step length and decision vector that can be determined. And the most important thing is the flow transport simulation model. So, we can use our flow transport simulation model as linked simulation optimization model as external module and we can calculate our objective functions, uh, also our surge directions. Surge directions are basically dependent on the Jacobian matrix and 
with this Jacobian matrix, uh, it will give the proper direction, but uh, the problem is that if you have a Jacobian matrix based approach, then you may or may not get a proper global optimal solution. So, it is important that your selection of optimization model is also important thing. So, first is identification of proper transport process that is identification of proper numerical flow and transport simulation model to simulate the complex hydrogeological system. Next is identification of proper optimization model and intermediate things are your linking things, these are intermediate calculations. So, in this case uh, we can have uh, two uh, optimization problems, first one this is uh, the observed concentration in monitoring well and this is our estimated concentration. So, this uh, the square of this difference uh, and this is a weighted one. So, weight is calculated like this, this is observed concentration plus eta value. Uh, eta is a small value uh, which gives uh, some kind of support for the weight. This C F Q F Q this is again our uh, simulation model, this is a restriction in terms of concentration, this is restriction in terms of our uh, injection from sources. Let us say that uh, there will be some kind of physical limit for the injection rate that is maintained with this particular constraint and there is some physical limit for concentration that is maintained with this particular constraint. And this is one per typical component of our uh, Jacobian matrix um, that is being calculated based on finite difference approach or difference approach. Second uh, model is that your objective function is linear in nature, but our constraints are nonlinear. Previously, we have seen that our objective function was nonlinear in OSIM 2 or OSIM 1, and this is also nonlinear constraint, and these are our linear constraints. So, some literatures suggest that there is advantage in placing any uh, linear objective function instead of a nonlinear objective function. So, it is being converted like this, this is uh, considered as equality constraint within the optimization problem. So, uh, we need to incorporate some kind of errors. So, for a particular uh, hypothetical illustrative problem, we have considered that this is a simulated value. Simulated value, we have added some kind of error. This it represents uh, the measurement sir assumed error free, it may represent a special case where the value is 0. 
and standard normal random variate for concentration. So, we can introduce some kind of error uh, uh, with the simulated uh, values and we can create some observed value to uh, test our two objective function uh, two objective functions or our two formulations OSIM 1 and OSIM 2. So, what is our evaluation criteria? We have used this normalized error estimate for source fluxes. This is actual value and this is estimated value. So, this is average one for this is for a particular uh, case. So, this is number of realizations. So, for multiple realizations what is the difference? So, from this we can get the standard deviation of the estimated source flux and this is the average estimated value of the source strength. So, let us consider one illustrative problem where we have three uh, sources one S 1, S 2 and S 3 and we have three uh, four monitoring wells W 1, W 2, W 3 and W 4. Out of this, this, uh, this thing is uh, having two impermeable boundaries and two constant head boundaries these are linearly varying. So, in this direction and this is the final direction. So, this is the solution result for disposal period 1 it has been found that this is the actual flux and this is the estimated flux values. The, this is 47 from OSIM, this is giving better result compared to OSIM 2 uh, using this minus and NPSOL and this is actual flux 0 uh, for all the cases. This is 30 uh, uh, 30 uh, is the strength and in case of Maharandatta uh, this was 29.92 this is 30 this is 29.99 this is 30 again this is 30 and for Prior 2 also the things are uh, almost matching, prior 3 it is almost matching, prior 4 uh, this, uh, this both the methods are matching and case of NPSOL this OSIM 2 is performing better. And in this case, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sources or potential sources and this many uh, uh, pumping uh, or uh, observation wells and these two are basically pumping wells. We have two zone case here and we have clean recharge pond, we have zone 1, then zone 2 and this H t is time varying head which is defined like this and this is a constant head 
and these two boundaries are impermeable boundaries. So, with this uh, kind of uh, pumping rates, these are the pumping rates for uh, location 1, P1 and P2 uh, have considered uh, different scenarios. Scenario uh, 1 that is error factor is uh, theta that is 0 0.1 in the measurement data, 5 percent increase in the hydraulic conductivities, 5 percent decrease in the porosity values. 5 percent increase in longitudinal dispersivity, missing data with error factor. Concentration data during the first 5 years are assumed to be missing for observation wells 4, 5, 6 and 8 and observation wells W1, W13, W16, W18, the concentration data during the first 10 years. Uh, are considered to be uh, missing. So, in this case we can see that for different scenarios the error percentage uh, is 9.98 percent, this is 16.68, 9.23, 9.94 percent. So, graphical representation of different scenarios, this is actual scenario and with actual scenario how things are varying here. So, conclusion is that with the linked simulation optimization model uh, can potentially solve the large and complex system capable of incorporating erroneous uh, concentration measurements. And unknown parameter values, missing observation data. So, uh, monitoring is um, most important thing for any management problem or a source identification problem. Let us say this is our GL value, uh, GL and this is unsaturated part of the aquifer, this is saturated part and this is our basically bedrock. And unit of uh, and this is our ground water level in the aquifer. So, unit of ground water uh, level that is generally considered as H this H is a BGL value, meter BGL. BGL is below ground level. This is uh, a piezometer, a typical piezometer and this is the screen or well screen. So, with that we can monitor the ground water level in any area. So, this is about uh, the water level. What about the contamination? Let us say we have a point source and we have three down gradient locations. This is the direction of a hydraulic gradient. So, ideally this point source should be detected by this particular monitoring well and if we estimate the uh, concentration there. So, we can correctly identify that point source, but in reality uh, the situation is different, our soil is highly heterogeneous and due to that heterogeneity 
the point source may be detected by may be detected by the third well which is another uh, well. So, the selection of sampling schedule under budgetary limitation that is one most important thing. So, monitoring network is basically that uh, finding out that sampling schedule uh, under cost constraints. So, long term groundwater monitoring is important. So, first thing is ambient monitoring which is basically regional annual monitoring for water safety, detection monitoring, watchdog, uh, watch a dangerous spot for detection, compliance monitoring, evaluate the progress of any management policy or remediation process, research monitoring is that monitoring for a specific research purpose. So, out of that most of the cases compliance monitoring is the uh, important one. So, a site with 30 wells and single constituent, uh, single chemical constituent to measure at each well uh, would have 2 to the power 30 or 1 billion possible sampling plans either 0 or 1 either 0 or 1 whether to monitor or not to monitor that way we have 2 to the power 30 solutions. So, any trial and error method is unlikely to identify the most effective sampling plan. So, mathematical optimization can effectively identify the most effective sampling plans to identify uh, to satisfy any monitoring objective that can be quantified. So, objectives for monitoring one objective is constant minimization of concentration estimation error, second one is minimization of uncertainty, third one is this uh, mass estimation error, minimization of error in locating plume centroids, maximization of spatial coverage and all are subject to budgetary limitation. So, basic approach is that we have the formulation, we have a optimization problem, we can find out the optimal solution either local, global or robust optimal. Ideally, if we have a large number of iterations, then uh, it should reach to uh, this x should reach to the ideal global optimal solution and uh, linearity or convexity of the constraints uh, space those are important things and we need to select proper optimization algorithm for guaranteed global optimality. So, spatial interpolation of concentration is important because we can have some kind of monitoring uh, information for any selected location. Uh, for other locations, we can get some kind of estimate about the concentration from the, uh, the some kind of interpolation, spatial interpolation uh, technique. Uh, distance uh, inverse distance weighting or IDW is the most common method where this WL is the weight 1 by WLX this is the distance between uh, two points that is L and X and to the power P, P is uh, the exponent DL is the distance or this estimated value for any particular attribute or parameter is estimated summation of WL into FL, L uh, is in the neighborhood uh, points of J. So, J is 
if we are estimating the value for j and n b is the neighborhood set, then l is in the neighborhood set of that in, uh, neighborhood set of j. This is weight, this is the actual value, this is again summation of total weight. So, one illustrative thing is that let us say we have this configuration where A and B two wells are unmonitored locations, but other uh, locations we have monitored situation. So, if we are drawing this uh, triangular neighborhood locations, so for A uh, we will see that E is the neighborhood location for A and in case of B, F will be the neighborhood location for B. But the problem is that A E this distance is far compared to A B. So, that uh, this information of B should be utilized while calculating A and information of A should be calcul uh, utilized while calculating the value of B. So, this is estimated value. So, we should have some kind of uh, this is actual values in the neighborhood plus estimated value of B while calculating or estimating the concentration at A. Similarly, this is uh, while calculating or estimating the value at B, we need to use the concentration uh, values uh, which will be estimated using our previous equation. So, these two equation will act as constraints in our optimization model, because uh, these two variables are unknown. So, we can write it in disjunctive form that is if a well is monitored, then we have actual value otherwise it should be based on the neighborhood concept or uh, we should get uh, the estimation from the uh, neighboring points. If we use big M relaxation, so this is a large value of M and this uh, xi, uh, this uh, chi thing. Uh, this has got 1 if a particular location is monitored, otherwise it is 0 if particular location is not monitored. So, for this particular uh, form of constraints, we can use this to get two sets of constraints That is, if it is monitored, then uh, this chi equals to 1, 1 means this is less than equals to 0 and this is again greater than equals to 0. That means, ideally this should be both the equation will converge to the equality constraint and uh, this C j will be calculated based on this actual value. Otherwise, it will be calculated from this particular equation. So, variogram is important thing. So, uh, it is basically uh, gives some kind of idea about the spatial variability of any attribute. So, this is uh, the h or dis lag distance between two different spatial points. This is the variogram value and variogram is calculated like this. 
variance half of the variance between u plus z uh, u plus h and z z is any particular attribute for our case we can calculate concentration value using this approach and the c is covariance and covariance is related to this gamma infinity this gamma infinity is basically a constant value minus gamma h. So, uh, we can use this expression for our calculations. So, ordinary Kriging is basically minimization the estimation variance subject to our uh, constraints that is estimation in terms of these weights and weights should be such that the summation of weights should be 1. So, finally, we can get this particular uh, set of equations and we can solve it and we can get the value of lambda and mu for our particular problem and we can also estimate the variance for any particular problem. For ordinary Kriging, uh, these are the potential monitoring locations. So, while uh, if it is monitored, then this part is not required. This is lambda is basically 0 and based on uh, the thing that a potential monitoring location and unmonitored location, we can use the BGAM method to write our original Kriging equation like this and we can have situations where uh, chi i and chi l, this is 1 1, 1 1 means this is uh, represents the situation like this that a particular row or column whether it will be used or not that will be uh, determined by the value of chi i and chi l and this left hand side this whole thing is represented as this psi i l. So, we can use this as constraints for our optimization problem and we can finally, uh, get uh, these constraints. So, these are basically spatial constraints. In case of IDW, we have seen we have got a set of spatial constraints. These are spatial constraints for our uh, optimization problem related to groundwater monitoring. So, now the formulation in formulation basically this is actual value, this is estimated one and actual value divided uh, plus this is eta, eta is some number which varies between 0 to 1 and this is number of wells and number of time periods. So, at the end of any particular time period and for a particular well, this is valid and we need to minimize the total uh, deviation and this is basically normalized deviation and absolute of normalized deviation. And this is the cost constraint, we can install only p number of monitoring wells out of this n w possible uh, potential monitoring wells. And we have that IDW or ordinary Kriging uh, for spatial interpolation. So, if you see our objective function, this is having absolute operated and it is like this blue line and if we differentiate it, it will be a discontinuous function. So, it is better if you convert it into linear formulation, you have 
we have found out a linear equivalent thing of that. So, this is the linear equivalent thing and positive and negative. So, both are positive and we can minimize this. If this is 0, that means uh, we have got 0 estimation error and this is basically to balance or to calculate the absolute operators and C j it should have a proper value which should be greater than equal to 0. This can be, be solved using any algorithm for optimization algorithm lingo uh, or simplex. Uh, if you have the linear mixed integer uh, programming then it will give guarantees global optimality. So, for a particular study area uh, decreasing agent uh, uh, trichloroethylene or TCE 8 sampling events from December 99 to 2001, this was uh, this methodology what was tested for Fort Lewis logistics certain uh, you know, centurion the Spears County uh, Washington and for these are the boundary wells, uh, these are the boundary wells and these are the inner wells. So, for this is the concentration contour for 2000 data and this is a scale. Uh, we can see that we have uh, these many wells and out of that uh, we have IDW scenario where only September data 2000 was used, ID2 scenario only September 2000 data with boundary well restrictions was used that all boundary wells should be selected and IDW uh, scenario 3 that is all 8 time period data was used and scenario 4 all 8 time period with boundary well restriction was used and ordinary Krieging scenario 5 only for September data was used. So, in this case uh, the performance measures were this uh, uh, particular relative estimation error that is average value based on number of wells removed or eliminated and uh, number of time periods. Same here uh, this is RMSC or a root mean square error difference between the actual uh, actual value and this is the estimated one. And error plots uh, shows some interesting results. So, interestingly if we have uh, out of these many wells, if you have only uh, 27, uh, 26 or 25 wells, the error is almost negligible for scenario 1, but if we remove uh, more number of wells that is 6 wells if we remove then uh, it will be a problem uh, out, out of this uh, uh, wells if you remove more number of wells then it will be a problem. And interestingly if you remove more number of wells again this error is decreasing. So, uh, we can infer that not only the number of wells also configuration is important for uh, any monitoring network. So, particular configuration can give a lesser error uh, compared to a monitoring network where we have more number of wells. So, IDW scenario we have uh, compared this with the existing uh, uh, existing solution and this is uh, our 
IDW scenario 1 is far better compared to existing results. Also for uh, up to 17 percent reduction in wells, this is uh, performing better as uh, have already told that configuration of monitoring wells that is also important thing here. And for ordinary creaking scenario, it outperforms uh, the existing results. So, these are the removal locations for uh, both the cases. We have found out a different configuration that is why our results are better. So, number of variables uh, with so many number of variables uh, it is giving uh, a guaranteed optimal solution because our optimization problem is uh, linear in nature and our approach that is also proper. So, that is why it is giving a guaranteed global optimal solution. So, you can see that ordinary creaking scenario have 1020 and N w that is 30 integer uh, variables. In last case, we have 1020 uh, real variables and this 30 integer variables. So, this is all about optimization thing and in optimization uh, uh, basically we have covered this monitoring network design part and now you can see that uh, what is the importance of optimization in monitoring network design methodology. So, with this uh, this lecture 37 ends.